Community Pulse on 100.4 FM. The time now 11.33 and we're in the second half of our segment on matters pertaining to social justice. Of course, the segment dedicated to us moving in the direction of Allah through the best of women. And uh, Sister Lila is in studio with us. And of course, um, those that have been following the series will, uh, would be aware that we started the element of Fatima a few weeks ago. And currently our focus is on meeting and greeting the partner who was the equal of Fatima, Lady Fatima alayhi salam. And so presently what we are doing is what Sister Lila has been doing is shifting our focus towards the early life of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And of course that's in the relation to, or that's um, uh, in line with today's topic, which is holding the front line and still holding on Sister Lila. <laughs> Yeah, so we were just talking about how old he was when he moved in with the Prophet Muhammad and his wife. Um, Dr. Zaid Ama Nakshwani gives the same account pretty much regarding the famine and drought and how the younger sons of Abu Talib were split between the three men. Um, and so what's significant about this is that it's important because this means that Ali alayhi salam grows up watching the marriage and union of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and his first wife Khadija alayhi salam. Um, so do you remember what we were discussing a couple of weeks ago in the direction of Khadija? Mm -hmm. And uh, now he had a front seat. And I mean, if we, if we think about how that impacted us mm -hmm. as Muslims, as, you mm -hmm. know, he had a front seat to all of that. So he he was in the in the front seat and very much in the thick of that situation. I mean, he would have witnessed the stress of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Khadija Alaihi Wasallam embracing him at the time. He would have been aware of the confrontation of Wadika and the declaration of revelation mm -hmm. of prophethood. Mm -hmm. He would have witnessed the couple praying on the first night uh, when Surah Al Mudathir was was revealed while in the arms of Khadija Alaihi Wasallam. And he has been seeing these changes in the household. He claims that he he saw them praying at night and then asked the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mm -hmm. what he was doing. And and he was then informed that this is, was the religion of God and he chose for himself and he sends messengers in, according, in accordance with this. And he then continues to tell the then youth, you know, roughly 10 years old. Mm. Um, so I call you to God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that you don't associate any potters with him rejecting all the idols. Yeah. So he's making it very clear to this young person, um, Ali, alayhi salam, claimed that he never worshipped an idol being from a family of people that were Hanafi already. Um, and according to Sheikh Suleiman, he told the Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he has never heard of this before and has to speak to his father Abu Talib first. The, Dr. Nakshwani here gives a different account that Ali Alayhi Salam accepted the message almost immediately and when asked by, later asked by his father if he was sure, he asked his father if he made him or if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made him and he adds that if it is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he answers to and he doesn't need permission to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala exclusively. So Sheikh Suleiman says that um, it was a heavy message and a serious decision. He said that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi smiled and told him that if he doesn't become a Muslim, then you must keep quiet and not blurt to anyone because prior to them, the more, the more vocal Hanafi people before them, they used to be heavily persecuted for rejecting the idols and they were warned by Wadika that things were going to get be difficult um, as they had been for the messages before. So they all knew that they were going to get into something pretty heavy and pretty intense. So he watched them continue to pray and he basically said that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received revelation on Monday and he became a Muslim on Tuesday morning. He said that it entered in his heart and he found himself repeating the words and he asked the next day for him to repeat everything um, that was said the night before. And um, he said that was being called to God to worship no one else, reject all the idols. Ali alayhi salam said he submitted there and then, and then from then he started to pray with the couple. Yeah. Um, so now big disclaimer as I continue to speak of Ali alayhi salam, please try and keep Fatima alayhi salam in mind in that mm. this is her suitor, in that he is suitable for her and that this is her masculine reflection yeah. and the mirror to her feminine self. So, you know, we're discussing her equal and so discussing that which reflects her as well. Um, then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he started to invite people in small groups to Islam, especially Banu Hashim. Abu Talib was the leader of Banu, Hash, um, Banu Hashim. And, you know, so he started with them first, the smaller groups around the family. So Nakshwani adds that in this, this case, it's basically like a sunnah mm. of getting one's house in order first and that Dawah must start with one's own relatives. Mm. So this is also like a sunnah for us to continue with and, and consider for today's day and age, inshallah. So as a result, there were rumors starting to spread that he was calling people to something new. Ali alayhi salam accompanied the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa on these trips where the Prophet um, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa 
would invite relatives for a meal to talk. Mm. Um, Nakshwani adds that, again, that this is also another sunnah of using hospitality in, in Dawa, but the way it's been done in our communities, you know, has become somewhat problematic, but that's a, another discussion for another day, mm. inshallah. So Ali, um, alayhi salam, was consistently there from the beginning, uh, but would remain quiet and observe the situation. And soon soon after, according to Sulaiman, Abu Bakr, who was two years younger than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would join and assist the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in inviting people some of the time, but not all of the time. Ali Alayhi Salam went along almost like a son figure, figure but consistently. Um, so now what happened with Asafa? So it gets to a point where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam decides to go public and calls everyone to Islam at the famous mm. gathering of Asafa. And Naqshwani adds that Abu Lahab heard the rumors and suspected that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was going to call everyone to Islam. So he'd be loud and obnoxious yeah. and he would interrupt him whenever like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tried to speak. And then after the dinner gathering, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gathered everyone to give a more formal speech. Um, and then he addresses all the tribes and his extended family saying, you know, if I was to tell you, this, this remember the famous speech, if I was to tell you that there was an army behind that mountain coming to attack you, would you believe me? And they said, of course, you are the truthful and trustworthy, you never lie. He then presses the urgency that they must embrace the truth of Islam warning them of the punishment of the hereafter and then said so who will follow me and the same people who call them truthful uh, went quiet mm. and there was an awkward silence and this is the warning of Waraka unfolding Ali alayhi salam looks around him and observes the scene both Naqshawani and Suleiman agree that these people liked him too much to insult him uh -huh. but were too out of sync with what he was saying to confirm it so Ali alayhi salam raises his hand and says lovely ya Rasulullah I'll believe in you mm. You know, according to Suleiman. However, according to Nakshwani, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam declared that the first to follow him would inherit his Khalifat and would lead after him. Then Ali Alayhi Wasallam Salaam declared his position three times. And each time he was told, like, okay, sit. And then asked the crowd again, as if to be fair and give others a chance, yeah, you know, yeah, until yeah. he de declared Ali Alayhi Salaam successor to his mission. So this further alienated him because the only one who will support him was this, you know, the little foster son. Mm -hmm. uh, then Abu Lahab then viciously curses the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by saying, mm -hmm. may you perish, O Muhammad, this is why you gathered us, so that we can abandon all our gods and worship this one God. According to Nakshwani, Abu Lahab also mocks Abu Talib, saying, oh, so your little son's going to be your leader. Um, everyone walks away and leaves him standing alone with no one but Ali alayhi salam and support. Abu Bakr wasn't there, but somewhere else at the time, that's according to Salam and according mm -hmm. to Naqshwani, he hadn't converted yet, but did so six years later and after 50 people did so. Waraka had passed on, and although not physically harmed, he walks home, you know, somewhat defeated to his wife uh, Khadija alayhi salam with young Ali by his side after that th the people turned their faces from them and they continued the alienation while every stone and tree greeted with salam the people in Makkah were, were hostile so besides all the character building from the constant display of integrity um, young Ali alayhi salam also became very good at reading people's behavior so with, with body language sc scanning he was uh, appointed to go out and seek anyone who was coming around who looked like they were, were coming to learn about mm -hmm. Islam so both discuss uh, both men discuss ab Abdul Thar uh, from Bani Khafa, which was a rebellious gangster tribe, and Abdul Thar rejected the kufa of his people when he saw that their idols couldn't protect themselves, so he went out to see the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ali alayhi salam sees him at Makkah and could tell that he was looking for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and not only is he the first male to embrace Islam, but also assisting the early converts uh, while facilitating the most sincere of the sincere to come early despite everyone else's rejection. So if you think about the barak and the reward of that and the honor of that, so, you know, this was also agreed upon by Dr. Nakshwani, who said in further, in another khutbah, um, that Ali, alayhi salam, was the, the one who would lead new converts to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi when they arrived at Makkah. Mm. So, um, I think the other one's titled Imam Ali, the first Muslim. Yeah. So, there was a consensus that Ali, alayhi salam, was the first Muslim and the first aid to Islam, according to Ibn Kathir, various uh, Takari and other sources. Mm. Um, and so, being one of the first means that your Iman would have been greater since you yeah. would have to had to deal with the yes, rejection from the community. Mm -hmm. Everyone else More wants so to keep than those like of course. Yeah, yeah cuz everyone else wants to keep the status quo and not rock mm -hmm. the boat. And like the Quran says about those who argue that they found their forefathers doing it and were basically just copying their ancestry mm -hmm. instead of questioning um, what they were doing. So unfortunately, we see similar problems in the Muslim community today when we find like some generational Muslims mm -hmm. Uh, still practicing cultural traditions that contradict the essence of Islam. 
And there are reavers today who have been kicked out of their homes, who have been rejected, mm. verbally abused, ridiculed, the, you know, loss of jobs, loss of families, loss of friends, marriages as well, mm. income. So, of course, the attack on re reavers is, a, is part of the larger attack on Muslims mm. and Islam. But, the you know, the generational Muslims still have their families, their partnerships, their neighbors, their community and so forth. So they can switch off the TV um, sometimes. But, you know, if you're a revert, it can actually very much be it can get quite personal. Of it's course, very much in, yeah. your, in your face. So, you know, like I said before, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his oh, family oh. and followers, you know, before they left Mecca to Medina, both Fatima and Ali, peace be upon them, would have to some extent grown up and matured in, this, in the, the backdrop of all of this adversity. But when you're connected to your family who are religiously and spiritually on the same page, and that is a very powerful um, energetic and emotional leverage, so much so that it's believed that the the messing of the gender ideology and the sanctity of marriage is is done with the intention of making people in society unstable mm -hmm. so that they you know against other unwholesome indoctrination um and so like normally you'd have this thing called an influencer like you mm -hmm. get them on instagram mm -hmm. So to cut a long story short, you know, it's, it's kind of like the the magicians of Fed On. Mm. So, some of the celebrity, yeah. some of the celebrities of today are like the magicians of Fed On. Mm. If one of them gets a pink bag, then all their followers want to yeah. get the same pink bag. But I can tell you right now, if one of them becomes a Muslim and wears hijab, you're yeah. not going to see the mm. same the same impact on their fans. Mm. They're not necessarily going to follow them into Islam because that is the nature of Islam. It's like a test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> test. It's not. It's not about what's trending. Yeah, it's but, testing but that. It goes against the tires of that. Always, it's always weighed up against um, uh, what would be a dominant narrative or mainstream mm. narrative or mainstream ideology. So it's always weighed up in relation to that, and yeah. it's obviously it's put on the back on the back foot. Yeah. So somehow seen as regressive or backward yeah. or something like that. Yeah, mm. wasn't popular then. It wasn't popular yeah. today. It was like it came in strange and it goes out strange. So, mm. as much as some people might say that, that Ali alayhi salam was a child and could understand Islam, he understood his own heart and what gave it peace. In fact, it may have been his youth that made him that much more understanding. It, it may have made him more receptive and less inhibited. Similar to Miriam alayhi salam, it may have made him like a sponge that absorbed everything that yeah. he was taught, and it may have brought him closer to the the fitra state that he was born with through the the humility and the innocence mm -hmm. of youth you know someone who isn't carrying the baggage of ancestral at attachment so if the prophet Muhammad Islam was the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then why would we why would he ask Ali uh, alayhi salam to accept mm -hmm. if he was considered too young or too immature to understand what mm -hmm. Islam was mm -hmm. so to undermine um, Ali alayhi salam's capacity of understanding at that age is to undermine the initiative of the messenger of Allah SWT and then to undermine what Allah SWT knows of his creation. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, you know, and I recently had the pleasure of watching a 10 year old recently connect the dots logically of what Islam is and then I'm prompted she made the decision to to embrace Islam mm. despite other family persecution, subhanAllah. So I've seen it for myself, so I can't believe it. Um, Ali alayhi salam has been declared and compared in regards to the, the Sabikon with others such as the headdress of the, the Pharaoh's daughter, since he had many wives and married his daughters as well. Um, Nakshwani mentioned she was adopted, but like he, he, there were other wives and children. Um, the other Sabikon was the man who confronted the people of Antioch and with the, the two disciples of Nabi Isa alayhi salam, um, where they were sent to guide the people with the same message to worship one God and forsake the pollution of idolatry with proofs that they could curb the people. Um, so Imam Ali Islam, has been honored with this comparison and ranked with the other Sabikorn, meaning the foremost in faith and assistance to the messengers in this context. So besides having all this closeness and parental affection from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's also noted that Ali, Ali Islam, heard the devil moan and could see things like Nur, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him that he sees what he sees and hears what he hears. And if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't the seal and the last of the Prophets, then Ali Alayhi Salam would follow him in prophethood, but is officially declared a man on the path of righteousness in the least. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you could do worse than mm -hmm. follow this guy and take him as a leader. You could do a lot worse. So he grew up heavily cloaked 
heavily soaked in revelation and said that he followed the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like the baby follows the she-camel of its mother. Mm -hmm. um, and then to the climax of this discussion, both Suleiman and Naqshwani speak of the man Al-Kindi who was trading with Abbas, and I think he was staying with Abbas, and he saw Ali with Muhammad and Khadija praying in the Kaaba at noon, may Allah bless them all, I mean. Abbas told him that, um, who they were and said his nephew, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had this, quote, new religion, and only the three of them follow it. Tabari says that they were the first to pray and and were later joined by the likes of Um Ayman, and um, she was also very close to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like an additional mother figure besides uh, Fatima bint Asad. And um, so I just want to make, make sure that we conclude with this beautiful cemetery, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying with Ali, and his wife Khadija Islam, runs parallel to Ibrahim and his wife and mm. their son Ishmael and who built the cover. It's like three, three, ah. three, Samala Bese Souls I mean. So I, I just I love that cemetery and how mm. that comes full circle and gives mm. us that closure. And so since we looked at previously the problem of the hero stereotype and how people get attached to the superficial qualities that you brought up, I think it was about three weeks ago. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I think we can appreciate how true heroism starts with a few, a small number of brave people outnumbered by a hostile majority and out leveraged in many respects. Here it's in the absence of muscle, finance, numbers and yeah. size that we of see the course. true hero shine as such qualities come from the soul and the character of the man and woman, hence the title holding the front line, except now this week we added, still, still holding, holding on. on. <laughs> still holding on and not, and not letting go. Sister Lilla, you know, I, and I know you like to round off uh, these conversations so that the, the, there's complete coherence, and I wonder if you would be opening to answering two quick questions okay. that came through from our listeners. Of course, it's entirely up to you. The first question says, um, asked uh, uh, why you say alayhi salam and not radiallahu anhu. That's the first question. I don't know. That's a technical one that mm. you will quickly deal with. And then the second question says, uh, Assalamu alaikum. If the Prophet Sallallahu nominated his cousin Ali Alayhi Salam, mm. being the first male to embrace Islam, then why did the Ummah disobey his order? Which came from Allah, because everything he uttered was from Allah. So in essence, it's disobeying Allah's command. Mm. That okay. The last one, I think I'm going to try. I'm going to try to address that as I continue to do research because that issue does come up later, mm. inshallah. So as we continue, we probably will tackle that one because what I'm doing at the moment is I'm, I'm looking at both sides. Of course. Now, for me personally, the reason why I say. Um, Ali alayhi salam. I did actually explain this before, but I'll explain remember, it again. Yeah. I remember, yeah. So, you know, basically Khadija alayhi salam, she received salams mm. from Angel Jibreel alayhi salam as well as from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Now the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam puts his daughter, Fatima, again, alayhi salam, mm. with the mother when he says that the four best women of faith. Mm. Therefore it's a bit difficult to not also greet her. If she's put in the same rank as her mother as the four best women of perfect iman, mm. then you know it's a bit it's a bit hard to justify not greeting her mm -hmm. as well in the same way, with yeah. alayhi salam. Then if Ali, yes, <laughs> and again, equal. is also put on equal terms to Fatima, then it, it's difficult to not greet him the same mm. as you would greet Fatima. Mm. And I also just mentioned here that if it wasn't for that he wasn't the seal of the prophets, who would be the next prophet? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. You know, so that's my personal reasons, my, my personal justifications, um, why other Shia people, scholars do it, because as I mentioned before, I'm not actually Shia. I look at both sides and then I will, you know, I amend according to my logic, according to the research that I receive. If I, if I receive evidence that's strong enough, then I will amend accordingly. Mm. Um, but why other people say, like, for example, why Shia scholars say, um, alayhi salam, they're going to have to give you their reasons. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I would assume it's probably similar reasons to what I have. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, perhaps somebody will explain that as well. But I do recall you explaining yeah. at the beginning and that in your research. And I and I was saying to Sister Lilla exactly because of the, uh, let's call it the contentious nature mm. of this particular subject matter, that Sister Lilla took her time during one program to go through this, yeah. to go through a lot of the technicalities. And yet still we get messages like this, the following yeah. one that says, the Vienna of Sayyidina Ali uh, should never be exaggerated as the kafir will use that to divide Muslims as they have done with Shias. So it's instructive, I mean, given the long conversation that we had right at the beginning of this discussion, mm -hmm. that we still get messages, yes, that would speak about 
venerating or sort of isolating uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam mm. and, 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 and putting him on a particular pedestal when the discussion is not really about that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, like I said, you have to do your research and you have mm. to do it according to the research because, like, I mean, to be honest with you, I do come across a lot of venerations and what I might perceive as exaggeration. Mm. But you don't know if it's justified and also you have to look at both the... The Sunni Hadith, the Hadith from the Sunni camp and the Shia mm. camp. Mm. So what I do is I look at like what do they both have in common? What do mm. they both agree on? What you understand? Yeah, like what do they both like? That's where I start first and foremost, mm. because especially if you're coming from a Sunni perspective, I'm not familiar with with the Shia Hadith, mm. so I don't know like what is strong and what is weak and and what mm. is reliable. But you know, I just want to like guide us to better if we are wrong. I mean, mm. and forgive any mistakes and accept our efforts. I mean, and mm. so you know, if we're wrong, then I just want to guide us and and keep us united. I mean, Thumma. Amen. 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 Uh, yeah, this listener also saying they really appreciate this program with Sister Lila learning a lot. Absolutely, I I agree. We are learning absolutely a lot, and and as we as we mentioned in that particular program, which we really sort of dedicated to speaking about ethical scholarship and mm. exactly what you're pointing out now, that it's imperative that also one must be able to contextualize yeah. that history is. Uh, um, it's there may be flaws. These were human beings that mm. also put it together and that wrote down. And yes, there are built-in biases. There's a whole range of factors at play, and that we must take this into account. Hence, you know, doing one's yeah. own research is absolutely imperative. But yet, of course, as long as we remind ourselves that we're always learning. Yes, I mean, mm. that's the whole point is to yeah. learn and to absorb information yeah. because we, we want to absorb information. We want to learn. We want to, we, our, our intention, first and foremost, is truth and justice. And then we can draw conclusions instead of trying to take a position and then justify the position. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And needing uh, needing to force a narrative into exactly. that particular yeah. line, to that particular position. But as always, Sister Lilla, as our listeners are also saying, we always learn a lot. So shukran so much for sharing your insights. And uh, yes, and for, for tackling topics which at times are not always easy and questioning assumptions, was, was unsettling assumptions, yeah. which are not always easy, but that's how we learn. And until next week, then you go well. Mm-hmm. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So that concludes today's social justice segment with Sister Lilla, who was unpacking, of course, for us today's topic which was holding the front line and still holding on this is as we are delving into the element of Fatima which we will continue next week inshallah but that also brings us to the end of today's edition of Community Pulse do stay tuned because up next is the news with Mariam Adikari followed by On the Agenda with Khadija Davis and from myself and the rest of the team I bid you, well, we bid you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and I just absolutely wishing you a fabulous day ahead. Until